So I just spent the last five months doing speed tests on this MacBook Pro Retina from 2012 to answer the question, does Apple throttle old laptops? The short answer is yes, as there was a noticeable performance difference between my laptop with an old battery and the same laptop with a new battery. Now the longer answer is more fuzzy, we'll say. I don't think there's code in macOS that says this computer is more than four years old, and we're gonna slow it down by 40%. Now I did three comprehensive tests to see if my laptop performance was affected by my dusty old battery, and and this graph illustrates the test with the biggest difference. The green line represents the time it took in seconds uh, for my laptop with the old dusty battery to calculate motion in a video clip. The blue line represents the time in seconds after I had the battery replaced. Over a hundred iterations, it took the old battery setup almost 250% more time to do the same amount of work. The craziest thing about that graph is that all that data came from while this laptop was plugged in. So bad battery, while plugged in, still has an adverse effect on your laptop. <laughs> Mind blown. Now I found this really odd and it actually was so odd that I went and did the same test on a 2017 MacBook Pro Retina as well as a 2017 MacBook to see if I could make any more sense out of it. Now, not every test that I did was this conclusive. My file export test showed the laptop with the new battery performing slower and the Geekbench 4 tests that I did were also inconclusive. Need all the details? Well, stay tuned. Now the lesson I think that we can all learn from this is that if you're planning on getting a new laptop, you know, spending thousands and thousands of dollars on a new laptop because your old Mac book is just a little slow, a little sluggish. Before you do anything, check the age of the battery on your laptop because you might be able to get a couple more years out of that really old laptop if you just replace the battery. And that's a couple thousand dollars of money saved. You're welcome. Real usage, real reviews. MobileReviewsA.ca And Mobile Reviews A, Monty and I base all our reviews on actual usage. And so with this battery laptop test video thing, we started at the end of 2017. So it's taken us over six months to actually physically finish this video. Over the last few months, I spent a ton of time rendering the same clip over and over and over and over again. And it wasn't like I could render the clip and leave it running overnight as I needed to manually record the time for each test. It was just so very tedious. Now, after collecting all that data, I still had to go analyze it to see if there were any trends. So if you do appreciate the effort that goes in this video, please give the video a thumbs up and please share it with somebody who might have a old laptop that is thinking about replacing it. Now, the test machine that I used in this video was a 2012 MacBook Pro Retina. I already told you guys that. The old battery would have had a charge that lasted maybe 90 minutes and that got progressively worse as I well try to wear it down completely. Once I finished running all the tests, I bought it to the Apple store to have the battery replaced and did the same round of tests to the old machine with the new battery. Now for all the tests, the machine was running Mac OS 10.13.5. Uh, prior to each round of tests, I reinstalled the OS and cleared the SMC and all that other good stuff. When it came to power, I turned off automatic graphic switching and never let my laptop go to sleep. I'm a heartless bastard that way, I know. So what were the three tests that I did for this video? The first test was running Geekbench 4 a multitude of times on battery power to see if the base computing functions were affected. As I said earlier, there wasn't much difference. If I wanted to be really picky, I think the Geekbench 4 scores were slightly lower with the new battery. What? I won't go into the details of what each test means as Geekbench has a lot of information regarding what those tests actually are on their website. Personally, I was expecting these Geekbench scores to be wildly different as I'm certain that a bad battery was gonna have ill effects on different parts of the computer. But they didn't, and that just seems really odd to me. And if you're curious, the brand new laptop, the 2017 MacBook Pro, uh, that line sits there. It's pretty fast. Now the second test I did was a file export test. I initially tried to export a large 30 minute file, but then realized that my battery would die after three full exports. So I went with a shorter test that took between two to four minutes. I chose this test because from a perspective, it wasn't terribly CPU intensive. And this would just be a test of the laptop's ability to just do simple work, take existing video clips and splicing them together. For this test, I used the same Final Cut Pro library and just exported the same clip over and over and over again. Now like the Geek4 bench test, the times on the new battery actually took longer to process the file than the old battery setup by over a minute, which is a lot of time considering, well, these tests only go for two to four minutes. Now, despite being slower, the tests on the new battery were more consistent. And when it comes to repetitive tasks, consistency is a good thing. I'll elaborate in a minute. Before I move on to the last part of this video, if you're finding this video useful, considering supporting my channel by, well, sharing the video or giving this video a thumbs up. If you want to take your support further, use my Amazon links to go to Amazon and just buy whatever you're planning on buying. I really hope you can't hear that. That's my kid crying. <laughs> 
He's very angry. So any sort of support that you can give me just basically helps me, well, feed my crying kid, as well as helping me make more videos in the future. Now the Geek4 Bench test results, as well as the file export test, they sat very heavy in my mind because they didn't make any sense to me. Shouldn't the laptop with the newer battery perform a bit better, especially that I found out that, well, my bad battery is definitely having an adverse effect on my old laptop? The only thing that I can guess was that I had been wearing my laptop down so much that the actual hardware was getting slower. On to the last test, which was the image stabilization test. This test required me to open up a new Final Cut library and import a video clip of Monty walking down my hallway. After each import, I'd select the stabilization option. Final Cut goes through two phases with the stabilization option as the first pass is to figure out the dominant motion of the clip, and the second part is to apply a crop to each frame in the video clip. Out of the three tests that I did, this was the most CPU intensive. Now at the beginning of the video, I showed you a graph of those results while the laptop was plugged in with the bad battery. Well, here's the graph of the test with just the battery. It's the same story. The processing times on the old battery setup were incredibly inconsistent, while the processing times on the new battery setup were incredibly consistent. The 2017 MacBook Pro and 2017 MacBook all had consistent render times. They didn't, they weren't all over the place like the old laptop with the old battery. Again, the old battery in this laptop proved to have a very negative effect on the most CPU intensive tests that I did. Now, this is one laptop of the millions that Apple has sold, so maybe my thing, this laptop is just screwed, it's just messy. I don't know. But the performance differences between the old battery and the new battery are very, very noticeable with that last test anyways. Now those three tests were the only tests I could do with hard solid numbers. I think I started out with six tests and I just couldn't, three of them I couldn't recreate con consistently. Two observations that I came across throughout this entire process was that towards the end, right before I took it into the lap to Apple to have the battery replaced, my laptop was just brutally slow. It was incredibly choppy to do anything. So by that time, regardless of what Geekbench said, regardless of what the file export test said, I knew that my laptop was about to die because of that crappy battery. Uh, the second thing that I noticed was that at the end of 2017, this laptop was still on Mac OS 12. Now to make everything consistent, I upgraded to Mac OS 13 and my bad battery warning actually disappeared for about a month. So I had to go and wear my laptop down even more. So 70% battery quality was when Mac OS 12 said I had to go replace the battery. It's at about 65 to 60 uh, for Mac OS 13. So, and I'm pointing this out because we give these com tech companies, especially Apple, a lot of crap uh, for, you know, produce, making us rebuy things over time. Uh, none of this stuff is supposed to last forever, but you know, we pay three to $4,000. I pay close to 4,500 for this 2012 MacBook Pro Retina, and I'm expecting it to last forever because it's $4,500. Uh, but it was good to see Apple through a new software OS uh, make my hardware better. It doesn't happen very often. So that's all I got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. It's the first time you're watching one of my videos. I do encourage you to click subscribe because you get to see Monty every single week.